Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. In a world where climate change, geopolitical tensions, and disruptive technologies like AI loom large, resilience isn't just a buzzword, it's a necessity. At Davos 2023, leaders from across the globe converged to tackle these pressing concerns and reached a clear consensus. Resilience is critical for crafting a sustainable and inclusive future. While personal resilience is important, it's only part of the equation. For businesses to truly thrive amidst these challenges, resilience must be woven into their very structure. Imagine a company where resilience isn't just a personal trait, but a core competency embedded in every process and team. This structural resilience empowers organizations to face disruptions head-on and adapt in real time. Currently, many businesses aren't fully equipped to handle the inevitable challenges on the horizon, but by learning to teach resilience as a skill and integrating it into their organizational fabric, companies can build robust, adaptable cultures ready to tackle any obstacle. Let's find out how. Let go of common misconceptions Resilience is a topic much discussed in corporate culture, but there are still many misconceptions about what it really means, particularly in the workplace. Chapter 1. Let Go of Common Misconceptions Let's break down some of the most common myths and set the record straight. The first myth is that resilience is all about endurance. The term resilience might conjure up images of unyielding strength or the ability to tough it out under stress. While this idea likely stems from the word's origins, describing a material's ability to withstand pressure, modern psychology tells us something different. Resilience isn't about enduring stress stoically. It's about the ability to adapt and shift your state in response to challenges. In other words, it's more about flexibility than unyielding strength. The second myth about resilience is that it's an innate trait. Many people believe resilience is something you're either born with or not. But resilience is not a fixed trait. Instead, it's a set of behaviors. Behaviors like practicing mindfulness, setting boundaries, and engaging in breathwork that anyone can develop over time. This means resilience can be learned, practiced, and strengthened, much like a muscle. Myth number three is that resilience is someone else's responsibility. In the workplace, it's easy to play the blame game. Management might say junior staff need to toughen up, while junior staff might argue that management should be more mindful with their workloads. The truth lies somewhere in between. Leadership should indeed create environments where resilience can flourish, minimizing undue stress. But individuals also need to take ownership of their own resilience, employing strategies to manage the inevitable stressors that arise. Finally, we have resilience myth number four, which is that resilience is too complex to be understood or taught. The truth is that while resilience can be multifaceted, it's not too complex to be actionable. By focusing on the mind-body connection, anyone can lay the groundwork for resilience. Simple practices like regular physical activity, mindfulness, and maintaining a healthy work-life balance can make a big difference. Chapter 2. Our Stress Responses Are Hardwired Our stress responses are hardwired. To build true resilience, we first need to understand our inner workings. Why do we respond the way we do, and how can we navigate those responses effectively? Over millennia, humans have evolved with certain automated responses to stress. The fight-or-flight response is one such reaction, triggered by our sympathetic nervous system. This system prepares us to either confront a threat or escape from it. On the other hand, the rest and digest response, controlled by the parasympathetic nervous system, calms the body and restores balance after a stressful event. These systems are deeply embedded in our biology, working alongside our mesolimbic system, which is our reward system that motivates us to seek out positive experiences. Stress impacts these systems in various ways. Now, Stress isn't inherently bad. Some stress, known as eustress, 
keeps us alert and functioning optimally. But prolonged stress leads to distress. The stress can overwhelm our nervous system, leading to chronic issues like anxiety, burnout, or physical health problems such as high blood pressure. At the core of our emotional responses is homeostasis, our body's way of maintaining balance. Emotions signal how far we are from this balance and guide us to make necessary adjustments. Understanding the nature and intensity of our emotions is key to using them as tools, even the negative ones like anger or sadness, which prompt us to make changes and return to equilibrium. There are four main internal states that we cycle through and that influence our resilience. They each have their corresponding emotions. The first state is stressed. In this state, we have high arousal and negative emotions. A little stress can motivate action, but staying in this state too long can lead to burnout and other health issues. Next, we have the state of growing. This means high arousal and positive emotions. This state, often linked to thriving, fuels learning, growth, and performance. However, its high energy is difficult to maintain indefinitely. State number three is regenerating. This means low arousal and positive emotions. Here, we feel calm, safe, and connected, allowing us to rest, recover, and heal. Finally, we have letting go. In this state, we have low arousal and negative emotions. This state is about recognizing a loss or a threat and knowing it's time to withdraw and regroup. To build resilience, both individuals and organizations need to navigate through all these states, stagnating in stress, whether personally or as a company, hinders growth and optimal performance. True resilience comes from the ability to move fluidly through all four states, allowing for growth, recovery, and renewal in a constantly changing environment. Chapter 3, Resilience is a Learned Skill Resilience is a Learned Skill We've learned about the four main neurophysiological states and how they are crucial for building and maintaining resilience. But how can individuals effectively move between these states? And how can organizations support them in this? The answer lies in developing specific resilience skills. A skills-based approach to resilience is powerful because skills can be defined, trained, and assessed. It's not enough to simply want to switch from one state to another. You need the right skills to navigate these shifts effectively. There are a host of skills that can be used to develop resilience. They can be grouped into three types. First, we have behavioral skills. These are actions that help manage stress. For example, leaving a difficult situation to go for a walk can shift your energy state and help downregulate stress. Next, we have psychological skills, which are mental strategies like activating empathy. This helps the brain to reduce the activation of the endocrine and nervous systems, which are involved in stress responses. Finally, we have physiological skills. These are techniques that connect mind and body, such as mindfulness meditation and breathwork. These practices calm the nervous and endocrine systems, helping to restore balance. Using a combination of these approaches is the most effective way to build resilience. Luckily, there are specific exercises that do just that. Physical activity is a powerful way to regulate stress and boost mood. Regular movement shifts your state from stress to growth by releasing endorphins and promoting overall well-being. And simple breathwork techniques can quickly calm the nervous system, making it easier to transition from a stressed state to a more relaxed, regenerating state. Another useful exercise is interoceptive awareness. This involves tuning into the internal signals your body sends, like hunger, tension, or fatigue. By becoming more aware of these cues, you can better manage your emotional and physical responses to stress. Next, we have attention regulation. The ability to focus your attention deliberately can help you stay present and avoid getting overwhelmed by stress. This skill is essential for navigating between stress and growth states. 
You can also regulate your emotions, managing and responding to them in healthy ways to help maintain balance. This skill is crucial for not getting stuck in the stress state. Finally, you can develop your connection to purpose. Knowing your why provides a sense of meaning and direction, which can help you persevere through challenges and maintain motivation during difficult times. By developing these resilient skills, both individuals and organizations can better navigate the ups and downs of a dynamic environment, fostering a culture of adaptability and growth. Resilience amongst team members building resilience isn't just an individual effort. Chapter 4, Resilience Amongst Team Members while skills like breathwork and emotional regulation can be developed on a personal level, it's important to remember that people don't operate in isolation. Our brains are wired to respond to the social conditions around us, as explained by polyvagal theory. This theory suggests that our nervous system is constantly interacting with our environment, especially through social cues. The vagus nerve, which plays a key role in regulating our heart rate and digestion, also helps us gauge whether we feel safe or threatened in social situations. This process, known as neuroception, is how our nervous system unconsciously assesses safety or danger based on these cues. Understanding that we're always perceiving social signals helps us see how the workplace environment can significantly impact resilience. When employees feel safe and respected, they're more likely to experience positive emotional states, leading to better outcomes, both personally and professionally. Conversely, a workplace that keeps people in a constant state of stress can diminish their resilience and overall well-being. Employees have a big part to play in how they interact with their workplace. That's why building emotional intelligence and psychological safety is key. The interplay between habits of effectiveness, how work gets done, and habits of interaction, how team members connect and treat each other, largely predicts team success. Unfortunately, habits of interaction are often overlooked. To strengthen these interactions, fostering connection among team members is essential. Simple practices, like allowing time for casual conversations before meetings or organizing team building events, can deepen relationships. Synchronization, such as scheduling collaborative work sessions and setting clear deadlines, ensures that the team works effectively together. Attention regulation is another critical factor. Agreeing on how to handle multitasking in meetings, for instance, can help maintain focus and productivity. Integration of diverse personalities and working styles, such as rotating roles within the team, ensures everyone's strengths are utilized. Finally, setting aside time for reflection, where the team can debrief and regroup, allows for continuous learning and improvement. Chapter 5, Resilience in the Workplace Culture Resilience in the workplace culture research shows that workplace culture is one of the most critical factors for retaining employees. A positive culture, where psychological safety is prioritized, not only supports resilience, but also correlates strongly with team performance. When people feel psychologically safe, they are more willing to take risks, share ideas, and collaborate effectively, all of which are key to both individual and organizational success. Workplace culture deeply impacts resilience through the effect of emotional contagion, which is how emotions spread within a team. Leaders play a key role in setting the emotional tone. Positive leadership fosters resilience, but high demands and stress can lead to a spreading of negative emotions, undermining this effort. To address this, organizations should provide leadership training in emotional intelligence and stress management. This helps leaders manage their emotions and maintain a positive environment. Creating a culture of psychological safety is also vital, ensuring employees feel comfortable expressing concerns. Regular communication can prevent stress from escalating. Other approaches to cultivating resilience at the organizational level include building attention management skills across the business. Implementing policies like meeting free days or setting aside focus times for deep, creative thinking can help employees manage their workload more effectively. Establishing clear email agreements, such as not sending or responding to emails outside of certain hours, also protects employees' time and mental space. 
celebrating achievements and providing positive feedback are simple yet powerful ways to reinforce a resilient culture. It's also important to foster an environment where mistakes are seen as opportunities for learning rather than blame, which can help reduce the stress associated with fear of failure. By focusing on these strategies, organizations can create a culture that supports resilience at both the individual and team levels, leading to a more engaged, productive, and adaptive workforce. Final Summary In this summary to The Resilient Culture by Leon Steffen, Silke Ruprecht, Chris Tamjadai, and Michael Richards, you've learned that resilience is essential for businesses and individuals. It's not just about endurance or innate traits. Resilience is a skill that can be developed through practices like mindfulness, emotional regulation, and understanding one's purpose. Organizations must foster a culture of psychological safety and balanced workloads to support resilience. By embedding resilience into their structure, companies can better navigate challenges and thrive. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.